Hello everyone, it's Justin here again. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I hope you all enjoyed the quality time off spent with family, friends, and loved ones. I definitely did. Today is the day after Christmas and I have a few spare moments so I thought I would make a video for you all and this one will be my predictions on the upcoming 2017 Canadian National Figure Skating Championships. Now I don't know about you all but I get just as excited for Canadian Nationals as US Nationals because I'm very supportive of my Canadian skaters to the north. Now I will start off by discussing the ladies discipline. So this discipline was <laughs> crazy exciting last season. I think it's going to be just as exciting this season to watch. I believe Caitlin Osman will regain her title. I think Gabby Daleman will win the silver medal and Elaine Chartron will win the bronze. Also Michelle Long placing fourth. So let's discuss Caitlin Osman. She has had quite the successful season so far on the international circuit, winning her senior B and then winning the silver medal at Boat Skate Canada and Cup of China. Now that's huge for her. What's even bigger is that she was able to qualify for the Grand Prix final for the first time in her career. Such a big deal. Caitlin this season has shown such consistency in her short program with huge jumps fast skating, quick rotations, great technical elements. She is on in the short program to the point where her scores were as high as 74 and 75 internationally. Now that's huge. I'm expecting we can see something like 80 for her short program score at nationals if she skates clean. Now the downside to Caitlin's skating in the past has always been that she was not as consistent in the long program. That, however, seems to be changing this season, hence why she was able to do so well at her Grand Prix events, and including the Grand Prix final. She placed fourth overall, but that was not a bad long program skate from her. So I think Caitlin is improving, and when she skates with the top ladies in the world, I think she's learning that she has to be as clean as possible. So I think Canadian Nationals will be a good experience for her on trying to get the perfectly skated long program. I think she'll do just fine in the short. She has so much fun. But yeah, I think this title is Caitlin's to lose. Gabby Dalman, on the other hand, I think is just hungry for experience and hungry to get on that world team. And I don't blame her. She had a big moment in Boston last year, placing in the top 10. And I would know that because I was in the crowds cheering so loud for her. And she's actually had an okay season this year on the Grand Prix circuit. She won the bronze medal at Nebelhorn Trophy. Great achievement for her. And then placed fourth at her two Grand Prix events. Gabby has also shown tremendous strength and consistency in the short program. Her best short program to date was at the um, Trophy de France, where she scored a 72. That is huge. And she has struggled a little bit in the short, or in the long program, excuse me. However, I don't think that it's a bad thing that she did not medal at either of her Grand Prix, because even though she was fourth, she was a few points from being on the podium. So that's close. She's right on the cusp at um, being able to compete with the top ladies in the world internationally, and I think she's hungry to break through that barrier. That's why I think she will be so good at Canadian Nationals. Explosive jumps. The only question I have is, Will she keep her jump layout for the short program? Will she continue with the triple toe, triple toe, or go for the triple lutz, triple toe, which has not been as consistent for her in the past? It all depends on what her goal is. If she wants to get on the world team, triple toe, triple toe in the short, maybe also in the long. If she wants to beat Caitlin Osman for the title, which I think is a very hard task to do right now, maybe she should go for the triple lutz, triple toe. We shall see. But overall, I think... Gabby Daleman's goal at Canadian Nationals is to put out a clean, long program. Obviously a short, but she struggled with the long, and I would like her to get her confidence back, and she should really be put on the world team based on her international performance this season. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about the defending national champion in Canada, Elaine Chartron. She's been very up and down since winning her national title last year. 
It's been pretty unfortunate. She has so much potential to break through and compete with the top ladies of the world, but it just hasn't happened for her. And I think it's just an issue of confidence and believing in herself. Sure, there are techni technique issues to work on with her skating. Uh, definitely cleaning up the jumps and um, working on um, a smoother style of skating, even though she skates really fast. She just has some cleanup to do with her edges and her stroking. But <sighs> it's going to be very tough for her to finish ahead of Gabby and Caitlin, who has shown more consistency this season. Elaine Chartron did not do as well at her two Grand Prix assignments. And I, I want to share a story. I did meet Elaine Chartron in Boston before the Ladies Short program um, at the hotel before going over to the arena. And I got a photo with her, and I wished her good luck, but her aura was just kind of down. Like, she almost looked like she was on the verge of tears. I don't know why, if it was stress or nerves or something in her personal life outside of skating. But it definitely affected her in the short program and in many competitions since. So I feel like she feels a pressure to do well as reigning national Canadian champion. And we'll just have to see how she performs. But I I don't think she's going to be able to place above Gabby or Caitlin. So hopefully she can settle for the bronze and be put on the team to go to Four Continents and skate well there. Because I do love her programs, both short and long. I think I love both of her programs more than Caitlin and Gabby's. Although Gabby's short program, I do love as well. Now, I also wanted to talk about another skater, Michelle Long, who had a breakthrough skate in the long program last year at Canadian Nationals. So that was really a great to see from her. I'm glad she enjoyed that moment. It's going to be hard for her to land on the podium as she doesn't really have the most technical, difficult jumps in her arsenal. I think she only attempted one triple flip in her long program last year at Nationals and did not even attempt a Lutz. But if she can stay clean and have that same performance quality, I think the audience will be behind her and she'll create another moment to remember. Okay. Woo! I finished that. Okay, let's move on to the men's. I absolutely think Patrick Chan will win another national title. And great for him. He deserves it. He's back. Beautiful skating. I also think that this is a place where he can attempt both of his difficult quad jumps. I would like to see him maybe even attempt the quad toe and the quad sal, both in the short and definitely in the long. This is a time for him to get out those difficult jumps uh, during competition pressure, and I think he can do it. Uh, he has an advantage over the rest of the field, not only technically, and not always technically, but most of all artistically. His program component marks are through the roof higher than any other Canadian men out there. So I think this is Patrick's competition to lose. Second place was tough. Let me tell you who I was considering for second place. Nam Nguyen and Kevin Reynolds. And Kevin Reynolds actually had a great skate at Skate Canada this season. Unfortunately, it was his only Grand Prix. And he attempted a quad sao and quad toe. He attempts both in the short, and he attempts both twice in the long. So he goes for four quads, which is ridiculously <laughs> impressive. However, he's just not always consistent. He's been pretty hot and cold throughout most of his senior career. I just don't know what to expect. It would have been nice to see how he did at a second Grand Prix, but unfortunately we couldn't um, see that because he was not assigned a second one. Let's see here. I think, oh, this is so tough. Overall, I just ended up going with Nam Nguyen, winning the silver medal here. And I chose Nam because I see momentum on his side. You know, last year he did not do well at all, all season long, even made it to the world championships because Liam dropped out of the world team and did not qualify for the long program. So heartbreaking. He's actually redeemed himself slowly but surely this year, um, having respectable skates but not placing close to the podiums. However, he does seem to be getting his jumps again, mainly his quad jumps. So I am going to take a risk and say I think Nam Nguyen will win the silver medal here. I think Kevin may be 
very inconsistent. Oh, oh, but it's going to be close, though. I believe it's going to be close. And in fourth place, I believe it's going to be Liam Theris. Am I saying his last name right? Theris. F-I-R-U-S. But Liam has not really had a breakthrough skate for me yet. I know he won the silver medal last year at Nationals, but it was when the field made plenty of mistakes. He is going to have to clean the skate, the cleanest program of his life to be put on the world team again and land on the podium. And that even means landing his quad attempt. And then in fifth place, I think I'm curious to see how Nicholas Nadeau does because he was exceptional as a junior skater last season. I definitely thought he was a upcoming senior Canadian man to watch. However, he had one international assignment this season at the Golden Spin and did not do well at all. I mean, he was falling and pop popping jumps all over the place. It was not pleasant to watch his skating there. But if he's clean, I can see him placing third or even second if Nam and Kevin make horrible mistakes. So that should be exciting to watch as well. Moving on to Ice Dance. Well, Ice Dance, I think <laughs> we all believe that uh, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moore will win. I think at this point of the season, they are unstoppable. So their goal is to just have so much fun, get the inflated scores <laughs> by the judges and set them up well for Four Continents and the World Figure Skating Championships. Um, the fact that they've been able to beat the French twice this season says a lot. I understand that the French made mistakes, but I have a feeling that even if the French were clean at the Grand Prix Final, the judges would have still given it to um, Tessa and Scott. Maybe some things to look out for. Maybe Tessa will have a different outfit for the short program. Maybe there will be some choreographic changes. Who knows? But the main thing is for them to have fun, skate with total abandonment in the short, and maybe find ways to make the long, the, the free dance more exciting, especially towards the end. And then I think we have Caitlin Weaver and Andrew Poget fighting for the silver medal. I think they are feeling kind of down this season because they are not on top in terms of the Canadian rankings for Ice Dance teams. I'm not sure they're handling being the second ranked Ice Dance team in Canada. I'm not sure they're handling as well as they should be, um, not performing too well at the Grand Prix events, not qualifying for the Grand Prix final. And by the way, when I say not performing well, I mean up to their standards. They are great skaters, beautiful skaters, but I see the nerves getting to them. And I, like Tess and Scott, I want to see them skate with total excitement, total abandonment, in the Canadian Nationals, don't let the pressure or the results get to them. They need to have a moment for the audience and for themselves. Their short program or their short dance, I actually really love a lot. But Andrew can't afford to make any mistakes on the twizzles. They need to have such a great skate that the audience and the judges are behind them, heading into the remaining competitions um, this season. So let's hope they can do that. If they make mistakes, though, I think that Piper and Paul can swoop in and win the silver medal here. Piper and Paul, I think, have a really great chance at winning the bronze medal here. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of help. Help meeting mistakes from Weaver and Pojay and perfection from Piper and Paul for them to end up in second and Weaver and Pojay to be in third place. We'll see how it turns out, but I think... I think those predictions are spot on for Canadian Nationals. And then the last discipline I will discuss will be pairs. So absolutely, I think um, Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford will win another Canadian title despite having some rough skates at their last few international competitions. I'm not too worried about them because the mistakes that they made at their last few competitions were on the really difficult elements. Throw quad, the side-by-side -side LUTs, like... Megan is an intense person that she's going to go back home 
and train those elements to perfection, and she won't let herself make those mistakes again. That being said, if they make a few mistakes here at Nationals, there's enough of a cushion in the PCS mark that they could still run away with the gold. The interesting thing is the fight for the silver medal here. And two teams, I think, are in strong contention for uh, winning second place at Canadian Nationals. The first being Julian Sagan and Charlie Bilodeau, and then Lubov and Dylan Moscovich. I'm not going to try to pronounce <laughs> Lubov's last name. I apologize. I would butcher it so bad. I am going to give the edge to Julian and Charlie, because even though this has not been their most consistent season, they did qualify for the Grand Prix Final. And when they are on, the potential is enormous. I love their technique on the technical elements. And their connection with each other is just so... It's so great to watch. It's like a good blend of like a friendship, emotional connection, but also a love without being too sexy. And it's all just very cute, but not in a juniorish way. That's the best way I could describe it. I love watching them. They went back to their short program from last year, which I think is a big hit with the audience. And hopefully they feed off of that momentum and place really well in the short program. And I think that'll give them the confidence to clean a, to skate a clean long. Sorry, I'm jumbling my words today. And maybe I had too much to eat for Christmas yesterday. Who knows? <laughs> and then I think Dylan and Lubov... When they are clean, I think their artistry surpasses Julian and Charlie. However, <laughs> they're not always clean and consistent these days, especially in the long program. And it's really from both skaters falling on side-by-side -side jumps. Lubov seems to be struggling on some of the throws lately. I would say they're an exciting pair, though, so they definitely have potential Ah, uh, okay, so if Julian and Charlie and Lubov and Dylan are both clean, I think it would be close. I think it would go to Julian and Charlie, but barely. However, it really depends on who's going to be clean. But this is a predictions video, <laughs> not a preview, so I'm going to predict that Julian and Charlie win second, and uh, Lubov Dylan will win the bronze medal, and Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero will place off the podium. I think they've had so many setbacks this season compared to their Canadian teammates that it's going to be very difficult to not only skate a clean program, but to skate it comfortably with the choreography. Other teams had opportunities to get the programs out there, receive feedback, make adjustments, you know, to understand how they can score better. And Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero just has not had that benefit, unfortunately, having to withdraw from both of their Grand Prix assignments. So that's going to be tough. Even if they do skate clean, I think um, the other Canadian pairs still have room to make some technical errors with a PCS bump to keep them on the podium. So we'll see. I do wish that they have a consistent and a good clean skate, because who knows, they may be able to go to four continents if someone on the podium doesn't want to go and get some experience that way. Well, we'll see. Anyways, what did you all think? Do you agree, disagree with anything? If any of you are at the Canadian National Championships, please live tweet and feel free to tag me on Twitter. I would love to know the results right away. It's so unfortunate that there's never a great stream for me to watch Canadian Nationals in the U.S., but I get just as excited, so I have to follow the Twitter hashtag to see what's going on in real time. But I'm so excited to do so. That's in a few weeks, and then I probably should make a video recapping the Canadian Nationals as well. Maybe I'll combine it with U.S. Nationals as a recap. We'll have to see. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.